you welcome to my channel thanks for coming everybody's here at the live and thank you for watching the replay if you're in the replay crew um tonight we're going to talk about grunge and it's just a little tag i made this afternoon um just kind of fooling around <laughs> fooling around so um let me address one thing um you're gonna see me wearing gloves in the next few videos because as i warned before um whenever i get fake fingernails i pick them off and i yanked them all off night before last and so number one they're tender and catch real easy because it tears the top of your nail surface off and number two they look like hammered um pudding and <laughs> so gloves it is um and this is a messy messy process so a lot of the medium that i use is quite messy um I stamped them so they'd be kind of decorated with some stays on. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just first take a minute to talk about grunge and what is grunge and why would you want to do it? So, you know, to me, it's a personal journey and it's not for everyone. But this, on a, on a physical level, grunge would be something you would find rusty or dirty or... Um, worn a condemned house a sunken ship uh oh let's see an a closed factory old an old closed factory all of those kinds of things hi meg um but on a more personal level i'm this is a place for me anyway to bring out the uglies in me and we all have them so and i know i do and they're not not just mean things but grief sorrow frustration anger um the things the underbelly of humanity so to speak in ourselves and so you know if you're not into grunge that's fine don't do it you know if you want to make everything really just nice and neat and gorgeous and compartmentalized great that's awesome do that um but if you really want to step into the dark side <laughs> come on over we have cookies so um let me show you first of all my grunge kit so it i don't keep it in a kit but i have gathered all my things here that i typically use so i use this mat <laughs> okay, that's for like ink smooshing and things like that. That's the mat that goes on the Tim Holtz glass, glass mat. And then I use this other rubbery mat. Um, many, many distress sprays. So colors are usually in the brown. So frayed burlap, antique linen, walnut stain, vintage photo, rusty hinge. Scorched Timber, though I love this color. Wild Honey. Ground Espresso. Crackling Campfire. Gathered Twigs. And then, um, oh, I gotta grab two Gathered Twigs. Okay, that's good. And then sometimes the Mica Stains and the Iron Gate and the Crooked Broomstick. I love those colors. And also the Fallen Acorn. And then also Salvage Patina. And then um, my favorite here is the cracked pistachio and um, the salvage patina oxide, which I'm out of. And then my paint. So why would I want to use paint? Uh, it is deep, and I really did want to address that. Um, I use paint because paint will resist everything else. And because I use a lot of sprays, um, a lot of times you can't get these colors to come through in the sprays but if you use them with paint first then terrific um okay so one of my favorite things where is it it's in here upside down somewhere i think where'd you go here we go walnut ink crystals so i sprinkle them on plain and then i also have them highly concentrated in one of these little atomizers that's going to get you a really deep dark color um texture wise mixed media power this hammered stuff is pretty cool um then um modeling paste texture paste black texture paste 
Lunar Pastes, Weeping Willow, Gold Rush. Believe it or not, Minty Fresh works amazing. Um, this is probably my favorite, the Gur, and then the um, Shady. I've got some Lindy's Magicals, um, Bandolier Brown and Yesterday Yesteryear Yellow. I've got some Shimmer Splash. I've got Luster Wax and Gold and Silver, and then this one is a is a, like brushed iron, so it's great for um, eh, you know worn metal looks. Uh, I've got a brush o and burnt sienna, and then I've got a color burst powder in uh, I guess you say phthalo green. Phthalo green, I'm not sure. Um, distressed inks, of course. Walnut stain, scorched timber, vintage photo, um, grit paste. I think that's everything here. These are, um, this is a rusty colored powder, and this is kind of a golden colored powder. And um, cinnamon. Yep, cinnamon. Multimedia matte or collage medium and grit paste. I think I showed you that. So that's a lot of what I use. And then um, I've got my VersaFine Claire's and my browns. Hi, everybody coming in. Oh no, Delina, no fun. Okay, I'm gonna put those there. And then I have stamps. I have a lot of stamps that I keep in my sort of grunge reach for often. This is an old before Technique Junkies became Technique Junkies, junkies stamp camp. Um, this is a Tim Holtz one. I've got these, which I don't use as much. This is a Technique Junkie stamp. It works great. I've got Simon Hurley stamps that I love to use for it. These, um, this is the I don't know. I lost the wrapper. I haven't labeled it either. Okay. Um, the floral borders. Uh, let's see here. This one. And then um, this, you guys all know, this is one of my favorites. This is a Hero Arts. And this is the other Simon Hurley one that he just recently came out with. I'm so happy he did. <laughs> and then, of course, the Tim Holtz ones. And older ones, like this one here, Bitty Grunge, and Rockstar, and Glitch 1 and 2. The script stamp of Simon Hurley, Tiffany, or of um, Tim Holtz? Um, I love this one because I have a huge fascination for planes. And then this is Glitch 1, which I love. Love this thing. And then this, somebody gave it to me, and it says SA on it. It belonged to her sister who passed away. And it's got some really neat stamps on it. And But I looked on Stampers Anonymous, and I didn't find it there. And generally, they don't retire stuff. So I don't know if it was from, like, a club kit or something like that. But there's those. And then I've got a lot that are pretty light loose because I use them so frequently. Like this Technique Junkies one. I love this one. Um, and then this one. I don't know where this one came from. No idea. No clue. Um, this is a, this one's a, I know my Tim Holtz ones. I just don't know which set they come from. This one that looks like snow. I love it for grunge. And then this one, I think, is a Hero Arts. I'm not sure. And uh, let's see here. This is from uh, Lisa J Jarda. Jarda. Um, I think it's just a really neat. Yeah, I like it too. And I like it a lot because it's six by six. And a lot of my bitty grunge are in this in here because I reach for them most frequently. And then these, which are old Stampendas from Andy Skinner. And then the Kathy Holden ones, which even, like, these are Christmas, but this one's not Christmas. That one's not Christmas. That one's not Christmas. And there's just a lot of neat, neat stamps in the Kathy Holden um, flea market finds. This is my favorite. I had a hard time getting hold of it. 
Um, all these little, I love this one with the little B. And then, of course, I've got stencils. And these are more of my favorite grungy Tim Holtz stencils, which we'll pull out. Okay. And then, just one more thing, because I just got them today um, from Simon Says Stamped. I was so excited because I love this typewriter and I love these numbers. And it looks like the numbers are all together, so I may do some surgery on those. Um, because I don't know that I necessarily want them in a row. So, and then the pointy fingers and funny hats and stuff like that. And then just like grungy words. Um, and then from Scrappy Shack, oh, I got the bundle. And I haven't been buying a lot of Tim Holtz stuff recently, but I love this stuff, especially this. And um, so, and I love this world one. And I also love all of these. So I got those, but those aren't what we're working with. We will work with these two tonight, but um, we're talking about backgrounds right now. And you guys, excuse me if my voice goes in and out. Kind of sick. I don't know what happened, but, um, and last but not least, my splat box. And you, you're not going to believe what I do with this thing. It's so much fun. So I took out some six by six papers because I want to be able to use them for Kendra's car challenge or not. Um, and the watercolor paper I use is from Walmart. It's this be inspired. Okay. And I use this cause it's $10 for this pad and I go through a lot of it. Scrappy shack. Yes. That's, um, Scrappy Shack is, I used to be on their design team. And so um, I've shopped there a lot. I I mean, I didn't get the Vault 1, not any of them, um, even though the price was right. So um, first one we're going to do, I'm going to get this wet, this. Oh, yeah, my brayer. I'm going to get that wet, and then I'm going to just start spraying it with some colors. So there's some gathered twig. Let's get some cat crackling campfire going on in here. And I want not wild honey. I want rusty hinge. Where'd you go? I know it's here because I just showed it to you guys. Here it is. No, that's wild honey. Oh, for Pete's sake, where did it go? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get some rusty hinge going on here. And then this stuff, which is very, very dark. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my paper and I'm going to take the smooth side. And these are kind of not smooth as like Tim Holtz paper. And I'm just going to take my brayer and I'm just going to run it in here and see what I pick up. So I've got the start of something, right? And what's really cool is that this is getting so worn that these little things are coming through. Let me flip it over. I'm after these wrinkles. Okay, that's a start. <laughs> Let's get some more on here. Let's crumple this up. Okay. Ugh. Um, let's get some gathered twigs. Got uh, too much orange. I need more brown. Let's get some scorched timber. Might want to point it the right way, huh? Let's get some vintage photo. All right, just lay that bad boy on there and roll away. Um, thank you, Tiffany. I actually found this on accident. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it's something you could do, you know, if you've had a session with your splat box. 
and you've got a beautiful, yummy paper towel in the bottom. Okay. So there's the start of our grungy design. So it's already looking rather, I don't know, grungy. Let me move this just right here. And let's do some, let's add a little bit of darkness here. Not too much because I want to add my darkness in another way. Um, let's do, let's get you wet a little bit. Let's do some, you can just press down gently on these. This is scorched timber. I'm not trying to spray the whole thing. I'm just trying to get this splotchy impact. Let's do some, let's do some wild honey. And same thing. Come on. <laughs> I know, all over my phone too. Okay, let's throw in some of this infusion. This is Rusty Car, and it's going to take some water. Always your water. And we're starting to get somewhere here. But wait, there's more. I generally don't use a splat box either, but <laughs> sometimes I do. Let's give this a quick dry. Oh yeah, I love the scorched timber, it's great. I'm just gonna use my dirty paper towel to dab the edges that are trying to run over. All right, so now we're going to go, we're going to grab the Simon Hurley script thing. Make sure I have it right side up. And I'm going to grab my lunar paste in the gur. Now, where's my little knifey right here? Just going to put a little bit up on my work mat. Sometimes this comes loose, so you got to press it in, otherwise it won't roll. There we go. So I'm going to make sure it's rolling first. I'm just going to get it on my brayer and brayer it across the stamp. This will resist anything you do afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to lay this down. And give it a press. Thank you. So you can see that it's lightly on there. I might just take my brayer and just give this a few taps here and there. Because it's there. And... I'm going to clean that right away, clean my stamp right away, and I just use these things that I got on Amazon that I saw Jennifer McGuire use, and I really like the way they work, so I bought some too. Yes, I am influenced by influencers, as we all are. I know what you mean, Delina. There isn't enough time. And it's a, I say the same thing. I'm like, there's so many videos out there. And I just don't have the time to sit and watch them all. I can't craft and watch. I'm just not that coordinated. <laughs> so this is still pretty damp. And that's okay. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to add some more texture to it here. 
And I'm going to do this with not my multimedia, with some collage medium. Oops, I forgot to wipe this off. Better wipe that off. I hate it. I forget to wipe stuff off and then I'm picking it off later. I'm going to take some of this collage medium. And I'm just going to put it on my mat. Like so. This dries matte and clear. Now don't freak out. This is my craft cinnamon. <laughs> so I'm going to add some cinnamon to this. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the cinnamon to stick to my paper. And it won't stick if I just lay it on there, obviously. So I'm just going to mix it up. And since I have gloves on, I have the option to do this with my fingers, but I'm just going to spread some on here and there. And this is going to give me some added texture. So it's a lot milder, a milder texture than say a grit paste, which I do use as well. Let's put some messy lines in there too, because we can. mudger up there. Okay, let's smash you in. This dries pretty quick. So yeah, yeah, so if you try to heat set this, of course, it's going to smell good, but you'll also bubble up your um, collage uh, medium, which is something I like to do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just cinnamon. I just call it craft cinnamon because I wouldn't eat it. So this will, let me get you up close, this stuff will bubble, which I like. I like that. I like that texture. And it's the, um, it's the collage medium bubbling, not the cinnamon. But it sure smells good <laughs> when you heat it. Get this one nice and bubbly. <laughs> yeah, now it smells like churros. <laughs> it's still pretty wet. But that doesn't stop me from working with it. So now I want to incorporate some color in here, but not a lot. Okay. And... I'm mainly going after patinas. So I've got my freshly re-inked salvage patina. You can see that it never soaked in the middle because I got too much because I'm really impatient. And let's grab a small stamp. I like to use a small stamp for this. Let's do this one because we can. And I'm just going to stamp this in this really wet part. Get my stamp nice and wet. I'm just going to go on a couple of spots. And just add that texture. So now it's got that kind of patina. I do, I do like to clean these off and I use this um, squeaky clean because it smells like cinnamon <laughs> and it's good at cleaning off the distress oxide. Okay, so let's come in here with a bit of depth as if we didn't have enough depth. But I've got this guy right here with the walnut ink, highly concentrate. I'm just going to give it a shake. I'm going to come in from the top. See, I'm not using my splat box now. This is really, really dark. This is what's going to give it that kind of 
I don't know, under the sea wet factory look, I guess my best description. <laughs> And let's give that a dry. This this dry is kind of shiny. It's kind of a trip. It looks wet even when it's dry. And let's grab our scorched timber here. And I've got the one of the little guys. I'm just going to come in and just bring bring some of this in here because I don't want I don't want white parts. In some cases you do. In my case I do not. Because I'm going to be cutting this up. And I'd hate to cut it up and just have that. Although that's not horrible. It's not what I'm looking for. So I may use this as parts of a card. I may cut it up and use it as parts of a butterfly. It's just, the sky's the limit with it. Let's get a little water going on on that one. Walnut crystals. Yeah. So um, I got these on Amazon. Where'd they go? You guys, I lost them. I have two things of them because I accidentally bought two. Now I have no things of them. No. They are by a company called Imagine. So you dissolve a teaspoon and a half a cup of hot water. It'll make about two and a half percent solution. Or you can sprinkle it directly. And I'll show you what happens if you sprinkle it directly. It's kind of cool. You like the Fruit Loops? I haven't smelled that one. I've I had the breakfast and I have a lemon. So there's what happens to the walnut crystals when you just put them on directly on and then spray them with water. And we grunged up that and I'm not mad. <laughs> So yeah, the um, they're not that expensive either, and they get last last forever. Let's just clear off that little bit of excess right there, and then I wanted to show you something because um, when we're talking about and as in the beginning of the video when I talked about the grunge being my dark side, um, you know, fear, anger, anxiety, grief, all those things. I want to kind of show you what it's like to show some grace. And so what I did was I took out some die cuts and let me find my tweezers here because I can't pick those up with my gloves. I took out some die cuts. Well, I took out several different things, but now that we've got all of our anger and frustration, what if we just showed a little grace here with a little flower or a butterfly? So we've got the, we've got this is, and this is still kind of grungy, but I like it. This is not grungy. Or we could do a wreath. And that would be showing grace. And, and, and it's about showing grace for yourself because we are the hardest on ourselves. And so, you know, to be able to get out these feelings and then say, it's okay. Is, you know, what I, I feel like is how this works for me emotionally, you know, on a physical level, it's just, you know, design. So, because if you think about it, even a dandelion can grow out of the crack of cement. So, these things like to bend on me. I don't know why. So, in the same, because these, again, these are just background pieces. They're not meant to 
be the focal point at all. But if we took and I don't know about this one, I would still have to, you know, grunge the edges. But if we then added grace, if we added um, like some pretty, uh, what is that, sorry ribbon or flowers or a bird or something like that, then it that represents the the yin basically to the yang of this. So dandelions are good for soil and they're pretty and they're great for bees too. So let's do another one, do one a little different. Now this next one is inspired by another YouTuber. His name is David, David, but it's spelled D-E-V-I-D. And I forgot to put his link down below, Rudenberg. And he's a Dutch artist who um, does grunge. And he had he had this video I watched the other day. And let me just move these aside someplace safe. And I want to show you what he did, which was pretty cool. And then I'll put my own twist on it here. So I don't care if I mess this up because I've already rubbed off all of the writing on it. Let me grab another six by six paper here. Where did I put them? You guys, I lose everything. There they are. And I'm going to start out, and that's okay if I've got a mess here because everything's going to come together anyway. I'm going to start out with some texture paste. Where are you? Some opaque texture paste. I love mixed media, by the way. <laughs> it's my favorite and it's my go-to thing. And see, I forgot to wipe this off and now it's all grungy. Hey, we're well, done at that, right? <laughs> I, I, people eat dandelion greens, I think. I have never, but I think people do. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of spread this out. And this is getting kind of dry because I'm bad about putting lids on stuff or, or using it. Okay, so he put texture paste. He put another kind. He puts something called grunge paste, which... I imagine you could use, and I did take some out. This is why, because this stuff gets around the edge and you can never get the lid on tight. And then when it does go on tight, you could use uh, grip paste too, which I love using grip paste. And then he takes paint. And I'm going to go with the cracked pistachio. And I'm just going to pour some on right here. And I'm going to take my paintbrush. I took out a paintbrush. Where did it go? Right here. And this is a heavy bristled brush. I'm going to put the paint and I'm going to run it through this texture paste. And then I'm just going to it's just a foundation. Let's blob some on because now that I have this down, it's going to resist any kind of sprays that I add to it. And while I've got this, I'm going to go ahead and make a hot mess with it. Grab another piece of paper. I'm going to grab my brayer. I'm going to bray this up and I'm going to rub this along here. And you see, because it's texture paste, oh, you can't really see, it's lifting. So it's kind of creating that. There we go. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, hi, Chow. Oh, my goodness. I understand that. I was trying to text with my son this morning and the cat wasn't having it. Okay. And then I still got a little bit on there, but I think I'm going to leave it be because I don't want to waste all my papers here. Just to clean that up. Kind of. Oops, I dropped my thingy, but Bob. We'll set this one aside because it's got some higher texture on it. And we'll work with this one. I'm going to put my brush there in the water. Um, the cat, beep, beep. 
Um, <clears throat> his name is Beep Beep. No, I don't want that one. I want my dirty one. Where is it? Here it is. Now, these are Viva, so they work really well for this. Um, they stay together nicely. All right, let's go. Let's go in with. Oh, I'm going to go in with mm, braid burlap. Let's do a lighter one. Maybe, maybe <laughs> if I can make myself do that. And so you're going to see what happens here. When I throw some water on here, sorry about the reach, that paint is going to resist. Nah, I'm not loving the frayed burlap. I'm not loving it. Wipe it up. We'll do Rusty Hinge. <coughs> there is a story to his name. He can't meow. Amalia, he's never been able to meow. He only beeps. And so that's how he got his name. Let's go ahead and throw some. Let me see if I haven't opened one of these. Yeah, I do. Let's throw some of this fallen acorn mica stain on here. I call him Justin Beeper. <laughs> He's old. He, he was my son's cat. I inherited him after he died. And so now he's my cat. Okay, let's go. And a water. <laughs> yep, Chow's daughter is like a cat. I like to turn these so that they drip down. I like this drippy effect that they get. So you can see that texture paste and paint resisted all those sprays. And I don't mind if I get my fingerprints on it. I don't mind if I get texture on it. Don't mind any of it. But that mica, once it dries, it's really going to show through no matter how much other stuff I spray on here. Let's spray some. No, I don't want ground espresso. I want gathered twigs. Where are you? Gathered twigs is probably my favorite. I don't know why. It's just my favorite brown. Okay. And let's see here. I think that's good for sprays for now. We'll get that dry. We got a lot of rust color going on here, but I have I have plans. I have plans for this. See how the little paint strokes are coming right through? Very cool. It's very cool. Um, okay. So I want to, I want to do something very fun here. I'm going to take this favorite Technique Junkie stamp. I'm going to wipe off my brayer kind of best I can. Okay, that's good enough. Good enough. And I'm going to grab the minty fresh lunar paste. Okay, where did my thingy go? Here it is. Again, just put some on my mat. And 
and I'm going to brayer some on right onto this stamp. And kind of taco stamp it. Yeah, I can just dip it right in there too if I want to, but it's better to brayer it. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> well, at the beginning of the video, I told you the story of why I have to wear gloves for my next few videos. Doesn't minty fresh work really good for this? And I like where it did that. And so, because I like that so much, let me go ahead and just get some water here on this stamp for a minute. I'm going to grab... Oh, what do I want to grab? I don't have a credit card. Oh, I know. Here we go. No, that's probably not. Oh, no, no, no. Bear with me here. Let's grab a piece of acetate. I'm going to run my acetate through here. Like so. And just create some lines. Same color. And I think, I think, let's give it a swipe there, just for the heck of it. Let's do, last time I used the lid to my squeaky clean, and now I can't find the lid. Just use the lid to something else. Thank you. <laughs> I stamped them myself before I came live so that they'd be entertaining. Just with some uh, stays on. All right, let me clean up this hot mess right here real quick. Because some things just got to be cleaned up right now. I don't want to waste that. What's going to happen if I just smack it in there and then give it a roll? Oh, nice. That gives a good texture, too. Okay. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> and this all cleans up easily on this afterwards if you walk away, which I often do. I craft and then I go away and I leave it all for later. Just me. It's just the nature of me. And I'm going to wipe the majority of this off with a paper towel before I hit it with my washcloth. <laughs> well, you guys are going to be stuck watching me wear gloves. And I use this stamp very, very frequently in my, um, when I'm doing... What's that stuff on the gel plate go? Gel press. Because it's just a favorite stamp. Okay. So we got to give this a minute to dry. And so let's do another one. Let's do an ink smushed one. So everybody pretty much knows how to ink smush. I know that you're no stranger to it, but I'm going to ink smush with my... Um, my spray stains. So let's go. Let's get, let's get walnut stain. And I'm just going to, same thing, like very lightly push down on this. So it's sort of, and I should have probably done it on that white thing, but I forgot. Mark making, yeah. I need to get this white thing out. Well, what it was at one time white it is no longer white. It's better for this, though. 
Okay, we'll just get a little bit of water going on on that. We'll give it just a little dry. Not be perfect. Let's do some antique linen. There's what I'm trying to get. Can you see where it's just putting those little dots? That's what I'm trying to get. But it takes a really gentle hand and patience to squeeze it out like that. Okay. That doesn't show up a lot because it's, you know, much lighter than the first color I did. But that's okay. Oh, thank you. Yes, I, I appreciate your thumbs up. <laughs> All right. And I'm not even going to let that dry. I'm going to go here with some, let's do some crackling campfire. Why not? I picked the wrong side of the paper too. So I'm on the watercolor, I'm on the bumpy side. And we'll do a little bit of drip drip there and heat it up. And this is just about layering. And you don't have to do the, you don't have to use these techniques with grunge. You can do them with soft colors. You can do them with bright colors. You can do them with blue. You can do them with anything that you want. But this particular video is focused on grunge. I know my friend Tiffany has a lot of videos of some beautiful stuff she does in blues. Just gorgeous. Ooh. Woof. All right, let's do, I'm going to go ahead and let these mix, see what we get. And this is salvage patina. We might get mud and that's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we got pretty much mud, so. This time I'm going to get it pretty wet. I can move that around. Oops, I shouldn't have touched my face. And just to make it interesting, let me grab this magical right here. And grab a little spoon. And just tap some on here and there. Oh, that's such a pretty color. So you can see what that's doing. And I'm okay with it not spreading out, but staying in a clump pretty much. I want it a little bit. I'm just going to give it a little bit of water and that'll help it stick as well. Now look at, look at that color that it made. That's such a trip. And I've got a hot mess here that I'll dip into in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Look at that blue. Like I didn't, I didn't put that color of blue on here. That's just how these magical I can. 
let me dip some more. So we've got uh, definitely a what looks like a hot mess going on there. I'm just going to kind of let this dry. I'm not going to blow on it anymore. I put a sweater on it. Like I said, I'm sick. I've had a little bit of a fever. I'm just It's just a cold. But um, let's go back to this one. We'll set this one over here to dry a little bit. And let's do some stamping on here. And I'm going to use some archival ink for that in ground espresso. And I don't need this anymore. Ouch. Boy, I got a hot mess, don't I? <laughs> um, and let's see. Let's just grab. I'm going to grab one of my favorites. You guys are going to laugh, but I don't know why I love this stamp so much. It's called Lottery Ticket from Technique Junkies. And it's got this Indian guy on it, and I just love it. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. I'm going to get a lot of ink on here. And I'm not, not, yeah, I think I will put it on a, I think I'll put it on a thingy, my bob. It's just so I have better control over it. Let's have Mr. Guy sit here. And, well, thank you, Don. And the thing about it is, is that these layers are all just background layers. You're going to pile stuff on here. Yeah, he's not showing up too well there. Let's see if I can get him to show up a little better in another spot. definitely get some action here. So it's it's subtle, but that's what we're looking for. You stay over there. I made a mess on that one. I don't know if I'm going to... Well, it, it's, here's the thing, too. If you don't like something, change it. Do, do stuff to it. Let's grab... Let's grab this... This here is one of my favorites, too. Don't ask. I don't know why. It just is. <laughs> oh, I forgot to take out my new stamps. Dude, why'd you let me do that? This is going to need to be hand stamped. If you don't clean your stamps, they won't stick to the platform. So this is no fault of Stampers Anonymous. This is my laziness. <laughs> do you right here we'll do a stamp off right there let's get out these new stamps oh and the stencil look at the stencil let's stencil You're right. It is never too late to take out the new stamp. <laughs> okay, and if I were going to stencil that somewhere, I think it would be right here in the corner. Right there in the corner. And let me get... You know what I'm going to stencil it with? I'm going to stencil it with distress crown so don't forget your crayons you bought all this stuff use it uh, let's go walnut stain let's see how this works I don't know if it's going to work or not but you're going to have to move out of my way okay I'm just going to rub it on in between the spots And then take this little brush and hold it up really close like this so it's nice and tight and scrubby. I'm just going to scrub it in.
yeah, it's definitely a cool stencil. I love it too. Let's do, since I did that there, I'm going to need to do a little bit up here. Maybe I want another color. What was this? This was walnut stain. Um, let's do tarnished breath. Drop one on the floor. And I'm going to just use the same dang brush. super visible but it still leaves that shiny impact there yep I love this stencil I do let's do another stencil um, here's another favorite I love these X's and I do like to do those in a texture paste, but I want a brown texture paste. So what do I do? What do I do? I know. Let's grab some lunar paste in Weeping Willow. <laughs> yes, Meg, you got it. And they don't have to be perfect at all. I got up underneath there. That's okay. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I love it. Now that's going to have to dry, but check that out. Isn't that cool? Yes. Yes, 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 ma'am. And sir, let's move that over here. And clean my stencil right away because it's a favorite stencil and I don't want to wreck it. I'm simple. I like simple stuff like this. So if you're uh, watching live with me now, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching the replay, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you. This I've already got crud all over the stencil, but I want to keep it as less least cruddy as I can. Because <laughs> uh, I use my stuff. That's all. I use it. All right. This one. Can you see the sparkle in that? I don't know if you can see it or not that's from the magical so um i think what i'll do here is i'm going to take one of these stamps that says sa this sunflower stamp i'm going to put it on a dealy bob And I'm going to stamp with Versafine Claire with this one in the acorn. So it's kind of a almost like a vintage photo type brown. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> Let's go here in this corner. Because this was on the bumpy side, they're not gonna, they're gonna be more abstract looking. 
disjointed. Um, I don't know. Words are hard. Not going to be able to see them as well because I can't press into the things without using a stamp platform. And I really don't want to get out my stamp platform because where am I going to open it? You can see that my whole space is closed in on me. Do a couple more. Oh, now I'm going to have to take my sweatshirt off. The weather just cannot make up its mind around here. Okay, let's do a second generation there. So now we're already getting lots more color in there. And let's go ahead and, mm, mm, mm. what else do I want to do to this guy? I want to do things to it. I don't think I want to stamp on it though. I think, I think I'm going to use, this is another favorite stencil, and I couldn't tell you the name of it. I think it's Henna Tattoo, and it's from, um, what's that place that Crafty Owl uses? <laughs> I can't think of the name of the company. Oh, come on. Hang on. i got to take off this sweatshirt. Um, Tailored Expressions. Thank you. And let's do, um, I'm tempted to do black, but I'm staying off of black right now. Let's do, I wonder if I did some luster wax. Nah, not with that pattern. Let's do, let's do grit paste. Yeah, it's a favorite. Yep, that's the one, Taylor Expressions. And this is opaque grit paste, so it's going to look white. We'll have to deal with that later. And my grit paste is kind of dry, too, because, you know, I just don't take my stuff out and use it. But um, I'll be perfectly honest with you, other than the fact that I just got my um, my thingy underneath the stencil. I like it thick like this. To me, it's a lot, a lot less chance of it slipping under my stencil because it's thick like this. Um, that's by no means is me telling you to let your stuff dry out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's tailored expressions. I have the wrapper around here somewhere, but I'm bad. Like I said, I keep a lot of my stuff, you know, at hand. Because I'm also lazy. I think we'll go that far with it. Not cool. <laughs> That's not grungy anymore, now is it? It kind of is, but no worries. We'll take care of that after it dries. <laughs> All right, so what we've got. Um, we've got to get me getting this wet right now. I'm not afraid to take alcohol to that. <laughs> Look at how dirty my hands are.
that's a nice wet alcohol wipe because my little thing that you drag it up between they won't they keep breaking off so I disabled it all right let's get a paper towel Come on, it's hard to pick stuff up with this these gloves on this plasticky surface. But it can be done. There. She's perfectly ready for the next use. And I use her a lot. So what can I do here? I could I can stain this. How might I stain it? Let's try the walnut stain. This stuff. Let's see what happens. I think I want to kind of go downhill with it and I'm staining it while it's wet so it's going to resist a little bit but it's also soaking that up and I lost most of my flowers but that's okay hey Amy Uh, let's get a little water. So it kind of runs up that way. Now those flowers that I stamped will resist because they were done with the first fine Claire, which is waterproof. Okay. So um, that's about it for tonight. Let me just recap what we've done already. Um, no, it's not rusting powder. It's walnut crystals. I'll show you. I have rusting powder. I do. Um, and then I have also these infusions. Like this one's rusty car. Let's just dump a little on there. What the heck? Why not? And just let it do whatever it does. Ooh, neat. Is any coming out? I can't tell. Yeah, it is. I like what it's doing. And I'm not going to dry it, not going to spread it around, not going to wet it, just going to let it dry naturally. Yeah, I know. I've, I've played with my resting powder before, and I've got a little spray bottle here of apple cider vinegar. But, um, yeah, that's something that takes some time to activate. So um, this was our first one that we started out with, um, a little hot mess. And we're still a little wet right here, but not bad. Not bad. And then, you know, if we wanted to give this some grace, uh, let's see here. I love these wreaths. We could do a green wreath on here. We could do some florals on here. What, look at that. That's a dandelion. So, um, this is this is a yin and yang type thing and again for me it's it's an emotional experience it's not just physically doing art but it's also in my mind beautiful art so grunge we did this one and all kinds of sprays and cinnamon and <laughs> just all the fun stuff and then um everything else is kind of wet still we did this guy which really looks cool with the lunar paste on it and this one here and then this is the start of one that i'll finish once this big blob of lunar paste dries yeah that's right you can eat them and they grow right out of a crack of cement so i hope that you have a better understanding of how to do grunge what it is and what it isn't and I, it's whatever you want it to be. Okay. So how, you know, typically it's going to be rust and earth tones, and dark colors. Um, but that's all I got you guys. I thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. I really appreciate your support and your thumbs up. And thanks for all the folks watching the replay. You guys are awesome. And I hope that everybody has a good night. I'm going to take myself to bed because I have a cold and I have a fever. And so 
I'm not really very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and I never took out the new stamps. Oh my gosh. Next time. <laughs> Take care, you guys. See you around the rooms. Bye-bye.